Today, I'm hanging out with Dr. Mbuyiseni Glozi, one of the leaders um, of the Economic Freedom Fighters. Thank you for coming into studio. Welcome to Prime Media House. Thank you very much and uh, good morning to all the 702 Prime Media listeners. <laughs> listeners. <laughs> there was a ring there to it. So <laughs> in the last hour, I because there are listeners who've been calling since really over the last couple of weeks <coughs> saying they're undecided um, on who to vote for. So I gave listeners today an opportunity, one minute to sell their party. So Do not make me sing. So... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting there, but I was getting there. <laughs> okay, I won't make you sing. But I'll tell you this. The listener called in and used their minute to just sing Azania. Oh. And it was just so cool because they just sang Azania and they're like, that's enough to convince other people to vote oh. the EFL. But as they were singing that, I had you in, in my mind because, you know, I've heard you sing that song and sing yeah. it so well. Yeah. But anyway, how are, how are things going? How's the campaigning going? It's been a very difficult campaign mm. from a messaging point of view mm. because there is a plethora of political outfits, particularly that are new on the blog, most if not all sponsored by the Oppenheimers, whose messaging has been to decampaign the EFF on, uh, I think, very unfair um policy misrepresentations like the migration question, immigration question, as well as the African integration question. Mm. Um, I think, nonetheless, we've been trying to push back quite successfully, particularly on the ground. Mm. And um, this time, the elections are the end of May. Mm. You know, over the years, it's been first week of May. So it's been a stretch. Yeah, But we're looking forward to, to the 29th of May with... We've done our part. There's no part of the country we didn't touch. And um, I'm hopeful that South Africans are going to give the EFF a chance. Yeah. So you <coughs> were you born in Everton? Yes. And grew up there? Yes. So Libitsan, get Everton or it's Everton? Both. Or does it depend on where you went to school? If you are Clement, it's Everton. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from a village in Limpopo. It would be Everton. Okay, okay. Everton. How, how was it growing in, in Everton at the time um, you were growing up? And at what point were you conscientized and realized, Ayman, something is wrong here with our politics, with the system? Well, I was born in 1985 and... Um, those were the most dramatic years. Uh, two, three years, you know what is happening because the 80s, it was the state of emergency. Mm. There were always uh, police on the streets, the military on the street, South African Defense Forces. And um, in the Val, it was particularly violent. Mm. A lot of self-defense units, uh, some of... Uh, my cousins, some of uh, my older cousins and my uncles were involved mm. in the self-defense units uh, that were fighting in the conflict of uh, black-on-black violence. Uh, so political consciousness came very early. Mm. Uh, I have an uncle that was particularly uh, political and I was very close to him. I continue to be very close to him who at one point came to be fetched by police uh, at around 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very dramatic because they were beating him up next to all of us. And I knew him as a very, very strong guy. Yes. And uh, to have seen him in mm -hmm. the humiliation of physical violence by the police, uh, there was no way of not moving from that situation, understanding um, that there was something wrong. And of course, having had access to him, I knew the Freedom Charter, mm -hmm. Struggle Songs, and all of that far much earlier. So what did that incident do? Like, did it radicalize you? Did it make you realize these guys need to be fought and fought very hard? Like, What, what was the thinking at the time when you were witnessing that kind of violence? Um, the post-1994 propaganda machinery was much more strong because we were made... You would know. I don't know how old you are, but... I'm, th I'm, I'm, I'm one of the kids. This year. Yeah, well, that, that's it. Yeah. I'm one of those kids that wore the two doves blue and white shirt. Uh -huh. 
sang on the streets, South Africa, we, we love, love you, Chico song, and all yeah. of that. Yeah. And um, and for a couple of few years, the the Rainbow Nation propaganda, uh. the um, you know non-racialism propaganda, got the hold of us. But um, um, we continue to grow up in broken schools. Mm. Uh, we continue to have high levels of unemployment, no services that were delivered at a basic level, access to water, access to roads, uh, that type of infrastructure. And that really, by the time one received um, entrance to your university, you knew that these people of the ANC had a fundamental machinery. Mm. At the moment, the machinery they control budget two trillion rands a year. Mm. And they've got parastatals, they've got this entire uh, machinery that they could turn or use effectively for economic development, for economic growth. But also they've avoided deliberately over the last 30 years uh, to shift into the economic freedom aspects, the land, mm. the mines, financial sector, which includes the banks and the insurances. Uh, and so that, that, that for me radicalized me more mm. Uh, in my first year at VITS, you know, we're on NSFAS, mm. uh, we, we get in in February. In March, they tell us, you no longer have NSFAS. And then we all know, I mean, it means we have to pack our bags and go home. Mm. So we had to engage in, in extensive struggle, protest to fight uh, for NSFAS, for the university to not back down. Mm. We fight already, one is in first year, 18 years old. Mm. And we, we, we engage in that struggle already in 2004. Win the struggle to get accommodation, to get NSFAS, allowances. You were part of SASCO at the time? Or? Yes, I was part of SASCO and the Youth League at the time. Mm. And Clement, as you know, that continues to be the struggle to this day. Uh, if the NSFAS allowances arrive, it's a miracle. The NSFAS system is broken and it's making few politicians rich in the process. Those struggles continue to define university campuses. That is what radicalized me. Mm. Uh, it's the post-1994 uh, refusal by the current ruling party to take bold actions to secure economic freedom in our lifetime. But growing up, what, what did you want to do? What did you want to be? Uh, so when you were, I don't know, around 13, 15, what were your ambitions? 1350, you know, um, at some point, yeah. um, I thought God is going to call me. To be a pastor. Yeah. I think God I is still very, calling you. I was very active in the church. <laughs> um, Which church is this? It, it, there's a church in Everton called Rivers of Living Water. I think a charismatic a church. charismatic church, yeah. Uh -huh. I got charismatized in, yeah. in uh, 1994. Jeez. I was nine years I remember it was in a tent of uh, evangelist. And I was like one of the new waves of yes, charismatic yes, churches. Yes, 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 mm. And I, I remember saying to my mother, we're in a tent sitting together. I said, I want to go there and be prayed for. And she said, no, go. How old were you? I was nine. <laughs> I mean, uh, no nine-year-old things like that. Oh, they do. You, you, you should not underestimate the intelligence of kids. But that's because maybe they have a calling. That's why they no, would think like No, not that. really. Kids are very smart and very comprehensive. Uh, they comprehend complex. You just, uh, you just have to go by the way of respecting the fact that they've got very heightened senses yeah. and a very powerful capacity for comprehension. Mm. Um, so, yes, I mean, that was on the one hand. And I, I really... <laughs> uh, like you wanted the, to do it the full time. It didn't come. <laughs> 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 it, it didn't come. I, I had to... Uh, and then I had, um, I thought I could be a professor. I was very uh, interested in ideas. I was absorbed in ideas. Mm. And um, by the time I was doing an MA, Peter Hudson sat me down mm. at Wits University. He was a brilliant theoretician, one of the most brilliant minds I've ever respected. Coincidentally, he sat me down. And a um, few weeks after that, Sheila Mange set me down. Mm. And a um, few days or so after that, 
Ashilembembe set me down. They all asked me the same question. What do you want to do with your life? Mm. You're very talented. You should think about being an academic. Mm. And um, I thought, okay, let me pursue academia mm -hmm. until we decided to form the EFF in 2013. You've completed a PhD now. What, what? I was in the I was in the final year of my PhD. Oh, then yeah. I had written two chapters. Yeah, of the ultimately six chapters that I had, and um, around May, the deputy president, the current deputy president of the EFF, mm. Floyd Shivamb, came to me because we we're in campus together mm. uh, since we were young, but at the time he was doing his MA. Mm. He came, he's like, Ish, there is this conversation. Mm. And this time, I think you should join it. And I joined it. The rest is history. It is history indeed. <laughs> I had a recollection of um, us coming to, I think you guys had a, a uh, it wasn't a conference, but it was an event or a campaign somewhere. I think it must have been in the Free State. Mm. And we were coming to get, get accreditation. But I mean, we were so young. This is like many, many, many years ago. Um, was I at eight and seven? <laughs> oh, and yes, seven. you remember? That was I so don't long think ago. I, you were with Hajra. I was with Hajra. Oh, yes, yes, I and recall. Yeah, I always have that recollection of yeah, we were so young and you were yeah. giving us accreditation. I don't yeah. remember what we were coming to cover, but anyway, uh, fascinating stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Which song would you like us to start with? I've got WhatsApp voice notes coming through that I want to get to. Should we start with Nkosi Sigelela? Yes, or Sebenza yes. Kanzi Ma? And go see a little, see a a little. Yeah, let's pray. Okay. <laughs> Pastor will pray for us here. <laughs> Good morning, Clement. This is Leslie Makatini in Durban. I am an EFF member. Yes, a Teguini and 2019 Kunjalo. But anyway, I just like to say thank you for having such a great and wonderful person, Mwisen Ndlozi and Siabonga Kulu Puti and Nkosek Busise and Kubega Nomsebenzu Akowenzayo. And you are very special and you are valued in, in, in the South African political system. And we continue to value you. And as young people, we look up to you. And um, continue holding um holding the torch and uh and support you always and i remember in durban moses mapira stadium where i heard you singing when you were at the manifesto this year you just sang i literally screamed at the audience and people in the security guards were wondering why is this person screaming and you sang as always and beautifully and yeah god bless you thank you bye leslie in durban Ah, thank you, Leslie. Palisa in Waterfall, good morning. Good morning, Clement. The year is 2002. We are at the Sowetan Anglo-American Young Communicators Awards. I'm mm. representing the Free State. Now, Clement, I never lost in public speaking. Mm. And yet the seemingly shy, unassuming young man from the Val hits the stage and wins the national finals. I go on to win the following year. Yeah. Back then, I knew him as Quentin Ndlozi. <laughs> One thing that this man did for me is he made me realize, because I'm very confident, I'm boldly confident, I'm loudly confident, but he carries his confidence with grace, and he, he, he might even seem shy, but he's one of the most brilliant minds I know. I'm so glad that he changed my perception on what confidence looks like and that we should respect all people regardless of whether they are loudly confident or quietly confident. What an amazing man, Clement. And uh, God, he humbled me. He yeah. won. He won. Uh, uh, not Clement. Uh, uh, Mara, when, when you won the following day, was it because he, he, didn't, he wasn't there in the competition the following day? <laughs> he couldn't compete again. Oh, I can only feel a but chance. Even if he was... Quentin, even if you were, <laughs> I, I, you now. I remember her. I remember, <laughs> remember her. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's on she's a, a movie. She's a brilliant now. communicator. Yeah. What, what, where is your movie showing Palace again? It's on Netflix. It's called Soweto Blaze. Soweto Blaze. It's currently Blaze. streaming globally. Ah, globally. Well done. I will watch well it done. tonight. I'll, also, <laughs> I'll check it out this weekend thanks, as well, Palace. Thank you very much. Uh, Tuso in Jobek, hi. 
Good morning, Clement. Hey, you are watching greatness, man. I'm so overwhelmed to hear the doctor himself. You know, talk of the doctor. Doctor is an ep- You know, every youngster, I like his politics, the way he interacts, the way he sells his concept and his ideas. ideas. He's respectful. When there's time to be chicken, banter, he throws it with respect. What a well of wisdom. Uh, Dr. Ndlozi, keep it up. I wish you could open a school of mentorship for young men and train them. Uh, you are just a blessing to us. Honestly thank speaking, you. you are a great leader. Keep it up. Uh, thank you. Uh, in Joba, do you ever feel pressure when there's so much expectation on you as a young, I mean, relatively young. You were born in 1985. You are young, right? Mm, yes. <laughs> I, I am young. Yeah, you are young. I mean, I mean, I remember 2017 when you completed your PhD. A lot of people were really moved and inspired mm. by you. Um, what did that moment mean for you? And, and when you hear people appreciate and be inspired by you, do you feel the pressure or are you more just appreciative that you can be of such inspiration to people? It is pressure. Mm. Um, <clears throat> it's all of it. It's mm. human. But you just have to remember that uh, you're, you're, it's really... Be- people respond like that because for a deeper reason, they relate. Mm-hmm. The story of coming out of Everton, Orange Farm, and the Val, in a, mm. it sh- should touch everybody. Um, but um, personally, I know that it's not as uh, special. I don't feel special. Mm. Cause when I was in school, there were much more intelligent young men and women. Um, there were a lot of brilliant young black women and black men. Mm. But the system only has 10 spaces. True. So when you make it, mm. you don't think, no, it's because I worked harder mm. Mm. or I am more brilliant. You have to remember that it means I've got this responsibility to which I must show fidelity mm. to make the fight for more spaces mm. so that the intellectual heritage uh, does not go to waste. Um, that's my interpretation of it. Do you ever feel survivor's guilt? Because I'm interested in what you say because I, I come from you know, a, a village in Falbank where I had brilliant people I went to school with who were mm. so smart, some more smarter than mm. I was. And I didn't get the opportunity to go to school and get a job because I was so amazing. And mm. they were incredibly amazing, but they just never got a chance. And mm. sometimes I feel the guilt every time I go home and some of them are addicted to Nyaobe because mm. what can they do? Mm. Do you ever feel that, because you say, you realize that sometimes there are so many brilliant people, but there are 10 spaces mm. and you feel the responsibility to, to open it up. Mm. Do you ever feel that way? Like to go, it's so sad that out of so many people that are so good that could have made it, they couldn't. And not because they were bad, they were naughty, but because mm. just the system, the space is yes. not big enough. No, not guilt. I, I couldn't function in a state of guilt. Mm. But that might very well be because um, I spend most of my life um, trying to contribute to the struggle. Mm. Uh, that's what the EFF is about. <clears throat> you know, it's not... We, most of us don't have the ambitions. We never did. I speak for all the comrades at the founding table of the EFF. We really were not careerists. We we're not trying to go to parliament. Our perception of parliament was that is, is that boring space. Um, it's not actually nice as well to be going there and pushing around old people to, for them to do the things they know they should be doing. But If you don't participate in the struggle, the reality is, Clement, the traumatic thought that really haunts me is what if this thing falls in the hands of fools? What if the country gets run by fools and we the ones who say are smart, the Mm. ones who say we have got a moral and ethical superiority did not avail ourselves as an option? Mm. That's, that's scarier to me. That is the most devastating thought. That, eh, what if it's not Because 
the, 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 I, the, the whole system can fall in the hands of fools as well because it's about chance. Uh, but as for guilt, no, because every day of my life, I work hard for access to universities, for access to quality education, healthcare. That is what we have given our lives for uh, as uh, commissars and fighters uh, in the economic emancipation movement. Mm. Hi, Clement. I am also from the Val, and I knew Utlozi from church, but his name to us was Quentin. <laughs> so we knew him as Quentin, and he used to sing. There was this song that he sang, I am the Lord, your healer. You know, his voice was so angelic. As young as I was, I would stare at him and have chills throughout the service. When he said, ah, I remember that line. Aye. I was like, yo. <laughs> I'd look at my mom and I'd look at the stage, I'd look at Quintin. I'm like, yes, 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 yes Quintin, we're not. I have a only worshiper as well. We're in the worship team. Yeah. What? I, I sing a lot. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. Good morning, Clement. You have a great debater in Dr. Ndlozi there in the studio. Um, I think a video of him, uh, he wasn't even a teenager, went viral uh, most recently and he was debating. Uh, his, bri his brilliance was already shining uh, even as a child. Uh, the other day at the Deep Blue Hall, he made uh, the nation aware that there are loopholes in the NHI. Um, I mean, when he mentioned how, why do we have to register every time when we are registered at birth, that was the cherry on top. And when he was told he registered at university, he, of course we register for the modules of the current year. Thanks, Dima. Yeah. I want to study psychology, counseling psychology. I want to deal with people especially the mind because i'm aware that the problem in this world is in the mind poverty is the state of mind everything is just the mind so i want to deal with the mind of these people i want to bring about the change i believe i was born for a change so i want the purpose of god about my life to be fulfilled this was in 2002 you were in grade 11. <laughs> Eh, you wanted to be a psychologist. I cannot then. bear the sound of my voice. Why are you so I like have no very, idea. Yeah. I, I'll go for psychoanalytic. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was incredible. Uh, what what show was it in 2002? Was it on Morning Life? Yes, Tracy Going. Yeah. Vuyo and Tracy Going. You remember Vuyo Mvogo? Yeah. Yeah, that was the show. Wow, how did they find you guys? Did they well, the competition was called Sowetan Anglo-American Young Communicators Award. Oh. So it was AgriClusters um, project. So because it's Sowetan, after then they take you on a media you tour the yeah. if you win, That's which I did. Amazing. Morning, Clem. Morning, Quentin. Um, Tato here. So I attended um, his PhD graduation uh, celebration in Sibuking. Uh, Mama Wini, despite her ill health, made sure she attended. And in typical Mama Wini uh, fashion, uh, before she gave her little speech, she gave everyone a bit of education about the significance of the Val Triangle uh, when it came to uh, fighting the system and how the Val generally was a hotbed of skirmishes between the system and people who felt that no i'm not gonna um, lie under your jackboot anyway the overarching theme um, at this graduation ceremony was everyone that spoke spoke about how mbuyeseni's attitude is always i don't know everything i'm here to learn and that is why he achieves as much as he does because he approaches everything from a I am here to learn, I don't know everything attitude. And I think we can all learn from that. Ah, thank you so much, Tato. Uh, give me the last one. Good morning, Clement, and good morning to Dr. Ndlosi. I would like to ask him one question, that if ANC-led government had requested him to come and be part of 
the Ministry of Education as an academic, would he put the country first and accept their offer? Thank you very <laughs> I much. I love how it puts you to the corner. Thank you, Peter. It's like, will you put the country first? <laughs> Forget your own interests. Yeah, would you? Uh, no, I, I would have had to be part of a collective. Yeah. So uh, such a decision would have to be taken by a collective and my collective to which I'm committed is the EFF. So uh, that's who, uh, no board in the NC would approach me individually, number one. And uh, number two, they would have had to approach the collective to which we belong. And that would have to be discussed and interrogated because seeing and uh, believing or also knowing that it will be the NC, they may just be planning a big trap to destroy you so people who are considering to give the EFF a chance in 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 Houting, who becomes premier are you the one there is a um a proposal within the organization but i had explained on many platforms that mm. the clement first of all let me thank everybody for hard mm. warming messages dj mm. fresh mm. is tart and uh, I mean, I admire him as a broadcaster, and um, I'm 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 completely uh, grateful to to the to the beautiful messages. Mm. Um, yes, we don't have the concept of the province. Mm. We think that from a fiscal point of view, you've got to devolve majority of the funds um, that you are budgeting for in South Africa on the local state. At the moment, the Division of Revenue allocates 9% uh, to the local state. And that's where you've got the, you know, at the coal phase of, mm. of service delivery. So we think Gauteng should become a global megapolis, a city, a global city region. In, so, and you integrate its fiscal capability. At the moment, within the, the, the current fiscal framework, that will be about in excess of 380 billion annually mm. in the medium to short term, it's about 1.1 trillion. That's a powerful bargaining tool uh, for mega infrastructure projects on the one hand, um, but also to attract meaningful investment for industrialization, where you create meaningful jobs. Uh, so yes, that that is the vision of the EFF, and um, and and I think that it's actually the best administrative proposal that will lead to. Uh, massive economic development, like fast economic development like we see in China, in all of East Asia uh, in the last 20 years. So there wouldn't be a representation then at that of this mega city? This yeah, there would be, like be a, a mayor. Political, yeah, would there would be, be a the, mayor. Would you be the mayor? The EFF believes I should, yes. Okay. <laughs> Have you said yes? Well, you know, we have, politicians to, win. Always we have say, to win elections. And politicians always say when you're being deployed, you can't say no. <laughs> oh, mo, mo, yes, that, that is the correct attitude. <laughs> Let's go to Zakele, who's calling us from Naledi first in Soweto. Zakele, good morning. Morning, uh, Clement Ugai. Hey, Tara. Hey, Tara. I uh, know, I love that boy. I love him so much because he loves us. He loves South Africans. I'm saying to him, He's bigger than politics. He must not limit, limit himself to politics. He is the likes of, uh, you know, the gentleman who invented a telephone or a telegraph. They call him uh, Emmanuel Morse. Mm. I'm talking about the guy, so, uh, the, the, the guy who invented a, 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 an engine, a Charles, a, a Charles Patterson. Uh, I'm saying he must not uh, limit himself into politics, he's bigger than politics. He, he's a humanitarian. I love him so much. You, you must tell him that. Ah, he's hearing you, Zakele. He's hearing you, Zakele, in the lady. Cool. Do you do you want to do other things other than politics? Well, we do. Uh, the 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 song you played earlier mm. Mm. Uh, comes from our album in the EFF, mm. uh, and we wrote it from scratch collectively. Mm. And uh, we do music, we do theater in the EFF. We, our politics is not one-dimensional. Mm. And yes, I do do other things. Um, um, uh, but I think he's challenging uh, me that maybe I shouldn't do the alpha and omega of my entire life as yeah. politics. Yes. <laughs> but would you consider <laughs> stepping out at some point? No, all of us should. Uh, yeah. At some point, you know, we, we, we should Bow have out. terms that end. Mm. 
and uh, see the generations that come after us. We must mm. live uh, and bear the fruits of what we have produced. Mm. Uh, not like those guys who die mm. in the seat. Uh, no, we must, uh, we must at some point you know, relinquish and mm. uh, the student command produces the next generation and we too are the led. Baton. Yes. Yeah. Professor Neo Lekhotla Lagarama Upi in Midrand. Good morning. Yes, thank you, Tim, and the great chef uh, always. Comment for Dr. Ndozi and a uh, question. Mm. Right. Dr. Ndozi, I'm in a space, you know, I'm teaching, uh, and my book on your songs is coming out next month. I must make sure you get a copy. So you can be one of the discussants because I'm writing about struggle songs and I talk about the EFF. But the question from you for EFF and for this election is, if I vote for you, I need to know who are you going to work with? Because I don't want you guys to go and work with the people that I'm taking my vote away from. You see that? That's very, very important. You guys have six days to decide so that the Black South academics, we have really been pushed under the bus. We need now a government that can support the job that we are doing on colonization and African in the curriculum. This is very, very important. After I'm 56 years old, I've lived during apartheid half of my life, and half of my life I've lived in post-1994. So we're serious about this agenda. I see the seriousness in the EF, but your challenge is who are you going to work in this mm. country? All right. Yeah. Professor, uh, I got you there. I'm running out of time, but I think we got the question. Uh, who do you work with post-elections? <clears throat> we don't have a decision as yet, but that decision is going to be based, one, on the fact after elections, if indeed we didn't win. The message we are communicating now is to all South Africans, do not divide your votes. Vote all the three ballots and give them to the economic freedom fighters. Give the EFF a chance at a majority uh, outcome. But should that not happen, um, we will never compromise uh, in terms of a post-election constituting of government. We'll never compromise on our seven cardinal pillars they will be the guide. Our founding manifesto, the policies of the EFF, will be the guide in relation to who we might possibly work with. Mm. Uh, but we don't have that decision, and I don't want to mislead our people. The only commitment uh, that at this moment I can make is we will not compromise on the policy perspectives that we're campaigning on now. Mm. Henry says, Clement, the EFF and Dr. Ndlozi are so refreshing to South African politics from an ideological perspective. Uh, their messaging has been consistent and clear over the months and their views uh, is not myopic. And another one says, Slam, um, I just want to say that your guest, Dr. Ndlozi, is one of the best things to happen to the EFF and black people in South Africa. We need his intellect and spirit to continue the fight to regain the dignity of black people in South Africa and to ensure that even the poorest have equal opportunities to become their best selves. Mayibuye. That's how this person signs off on that WhatsApp message. Dr. Mbuisen Ndlozi, thank you for coming in and hanging out with us. I appreciate it and thanks for all the contributions from uh, the 702 community. Let's meet on the ballots, uh, on the polls on the 29th of May. And again, my parting shot is... Let us all give the EFF a chance. It will deliver economic freedom in our lifetime. Hanging out with Clement on 702. Let's walk the talk.